What's up guys? This is Chad with Living the Van Life. Right now I'm coming to you from Washington State. It is March 26th of 2020. We're currently all on lockdown because of this COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that Living the Van Life stops putting out videos. I've actually got four videos in the can from a road trip that I started back on February 20th before this coronavirus outbreak really hit the United States. And I was out for the ultimate journey on a long-term road trip and I had began documenting my trip. So now that we're on lockdown and we're forced to stay indoors, it's the perfect time to be putting these videos together. In just a few moments in this video, I'm about to release the very first video of this series, but I just wanted to preface this video with this information and let you guys know that this road trip was occurring before the coronavirus outbreak. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's staying healthy and I hope that everybody's doing their due diligence as a responsible citizen and staying indoors to help stop the spread of this virus. Cheers guys, I hope you enjoy this video. If there is one thing that living in a van has taught me, that would be that nothing says freedom like the open road. What's up guys, this is Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. Yesterday I decided that I needed a little bit of a change of scenery. I decided maybe I'd go up towards Canada, who knows, maybe Alaska. I turned the key, I pointed the steering wheel. At the fuel station, I had a change of heart. I decided, you know what, maybe not Canada or Alaska. Why not Wyoming? What about Jackson Hole, Wyoming? To be honest with you, I've got a huge soft spot for the Grand Tetons in that whole area. So I figured, you know what? Why not? Nothing says freedom like the open road. That is exactly the reason why I live in a van. So here we are guys. We are on the ultimate van journey across Washington, Idaho, and into Wyoming. Welcome aboard, and let's see what we find on this here open road. Winterland, tell me all your secrets. Well, this is actually pretty cool. I am up here on the bluff above Lewiston and Clarkston. One is in Washington, one is in Idaho. The Snake River runs right through here. This is about 2,000 feet above the Snake River. Back in the day, the wagon roads used to come up here. They were excruciatingly steep. About 1917, the automobile came along and made those old wagon roads obsolete. So what they did is they engineered a 10 mile long road with a 2,000 foot grade that takes you down into Lewiston and Clarkston from the Mesa up here on top. It's quite the engineering marvel from back in the day of first time road building, so that's pretty dang cool. Drivers can still go enjoy the old road. It's called the Spiral Highway. I figured it'd be pretty cool to be able to take the van down it. say that was actually pretty cool. The old spiral highway, little piece of history right there. It actually really goes to show what an engineering feat it was to build a road like that a hundred years ago. And it's cool how they had to use the lay of the land and the mountain and spiral the highway up the hills to get that gradual grade. And that's the cool thing about getting out here on road trips because you get to find and experience things like that. I'm 
out here on Highway 12 eastbound through Idaho along the Clearwater River. And this heads up over Lolo Pass and into Montana. But I've got about another 140 miles yet to go to the destination that I want to call it quits for the night. So should be hitting the top of Lolo Pass right about sunset, which should provide for some pretty cool scenes up there, hopefully. Nonetheless, we'll keep on trucking. Uh, starting to get way up here on Highway 12. Still not quite to Montana, still in Idaho, but along the Clearwater River. And as you can see behind me, the river has frozen over solid, which is kind of cool. It's just a slow moving part of the river, so it's cold enough out to where it's frozen. That's how cold it is up here in the mountains. Look at this winter scene right here. That's pretty cool. Well, good morning guys. I uh, drove quite a ways into the night last night. And that's the thing that I love about road tripping when you live in your van is that you literally don't really think twice about things. You just turn the key and go. You don't have to worry about hotel rooms. So here I am in Montana doing some urban stealth camping. And I thought this was pretty unique because, well, this is urban stealth camping in Victor, Montana. That's just how urban it gets around here. So yeah, I was uh, driving south on the highway here. It got late, wanted to pull over for a bite to eat and enjoy a good old cowboy bar here in Victor, which is the old Cowboy Troy's and that was a good old treat. That was fun for sure. It was cool to see the old timers cutting up a rug. Out there on the old dance floor doing some two-stepping. Uh, anyways, this is it. I'm uh, pulled off here in a big, wide open, empty parking lot. I woke up this morning, it was 22 degrees outside. Uh, that is Fahrenheit. And uh, it was a nice, cozy 60 degrees inside the van. So I had a really good night's sleep. Uh, from here, I'm gonna continue driving south, up over a pass into Idaho and down into Salmon, Idaho. So that's on the agenda for today. But uh, yeah, here we go. I'll walk, I'll walk all of the miles you want me to walk. Man, I tell you what, this is probably one of the coolest spots on this whole entire trip thus far. I am out here in the middle of the Limhigh Valley, south of Salmon, Idaho, basically between Salmon, Idaho and Idaho Falls. I'm on this long remote highway and it is seriously like being on a different planet. The expanse of this wide open valley is just phenomenal. This is the stuff that I love. This is the stuff that you don't get to see sitting at home in your comfort zone. This is what you get when you push outside the box. You push yourself. That's what I had to do. I had to push myself 
to get out here. I was in my comfort zone back in Bellingham doing my thing around there. Finally decided that I needed to turn the key and push myself out here. Even just because I live in a van and I do all this stuff on YouTube doesn't mean that it comes easy for me either. It's still something that I have to push myself for. But this, this is the reward. Freaking phenomenal. And look, that highway, it just disappears out into the horizon over there. Who knows where it goes? But that's the awesome part about driving and exploring is the fact that you have no idea what's around the corner. But that's the direction we're headed and that's what we're gonna go find out. What is around that next corner? What is over that next horizon? I love that. I'm approaching Wyoming here in eastern Idaho. The sun is starting to set so the whole entire landscape which is completely covered in snow is starting to turn that pink. I can see the Tetons off in the distance which means we are definitely getting close. That I am excited for. I've been there once and it was really 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 cool. It's been one of my favorite spots that I've been to in the western United States. This landscape around here is unreal. It's so surreal. So cool seeing it in the snow. gosh I cannot tell you what it means to be back here this is exactly why I am here and this is only the beginning of it right now Whew. I've got some serious goosebumps right now serious serious goosebumps because of this scene right back here all of this this is only the beginning this is the backside the real part is on the other side. Jackson Hole, Grand Tetons National Park, in fact, even the lower half of Yellowstone. That's all a giant playground on the other side and I can't wait to go spend time there and explore and breathe and just sit and just be. Just simply be. I've been driving for like three days straight, but to be greeted, with the first side of the Tetons with a wonderful sunset. That's a good omen right there. I tell you what though, that heater is gonna be absolutely necessary. It is frigid right now, and uh, it's just the start of the cold part of the night. Anyways, I still got a ways to go to get down into Jackson, but I just had to stop and take a moment. Climbing up Teton Pass, the Vanagon is in first gear. I've never climbed a pass in first gear and we're at like 25 miles an hour. 10% grades up this thing. All the way to the top, up and over, into Jackson Hole, here we go. And then of course down the other side, 10% grades coming down into Jackson Hole. The wall of snow and ice on the sides is great because uh, at least if shit gets out of control, we're in this 
tunnel of ice. Definitely steep. It's pretty wild. In 10 miles, turn left onto West Broadway Avenue. We have officially made it to downtown Jackson Hole. Feels good to be done driving. As it turns out, once I got here, started realizing that Jackson, as a city limits, has really cracked down on people sleeping in their vehicles. So uh, anywhere else I have gone, I've always just been able to camp in the streets and just figure it out. And that's my style, that's what I like to do. But I get to Jackson and find out that that's not such the case because it is like one of the number one ski destinations. So of course everybody in their Sprinter vans and any sort of vehicle is showing up here hoping to camp and sleep in their vehicles. So here we are. We are urban stealth camping. I've got myself pulled into a parking spot of a hotel. And I'm gonna go ahead and hunker down here for the night and hopefully this works. And I think I'm gonna be able to pull it off at least for this night. I wouldn't want to plan on doing this for a long-term period of time, that's for sure. But I think for tonight, it'll work. This is the fun part, and I, I am glad that I didn't research this kind of stuff before I got here because, you know, people have different opinions and different outlooks, different angles on stuff, and you might read that something is not possible and therefore just be completely turned off to the whole idea. But nonetheless, I'm here, and I'm going to figure it out and just make it work. I've got my bed made. The diesel heater is going. Uh, it is currently 6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a negative 14 degrees Celsius outside. Here inside the van, it is 51 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees Celsius. And right now, the diesel heater is just on low. I've got all the curtains closed up, and it's more than comfortable for what I need. Uh, to get myself through this evening. Uh, tomorrow I'll be able to scope out the town in the daylight and be able to figure out what I need to do to be able to make this place work because I'd love to actually stay here for a week or two or maybe even three and just kind of make this home for a while. But I, I won't be able to do it like I normally do it uh, on the streets of any other town that I've been in. So this will take a little bit more technique, which is cool, I like the challenge. But nonetheless, I'm hunkered up here in downtown Jackson in a spot that I think will work. We'll see if I make it through the night. Anyways, here we go. We'll give it a shot. Well, luckily I made it through the night last night with no apparent problems at all. I hope you guys enjoyed the road trip across the Pacific Northwest and down here into Wyoming. I just love getting to see all of that scenery, especially in its winter wonderland glory. From here, I've got several videos coming to you from the Grand Teton National Park, so please stay tuned for videos coming up. Guys, thank you so much for being part of the channel. Thank you for all the new subscribers and for the subscribers that have been with me over the years. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate all of your support. If you've made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell next to the subscribe button and you'll be notified anytime more videos like this are released on the Living the Van Life YouTube channel. All right guys, there is more adventure to be had out here in the Grand Tetons National Park. Peace out, keep on trucking.